It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about how to force some of your Docker containers to use a specific other Docker container when it's a VPN. So one of the things you'll run into is when you're out on the internet trying to browse around and trying to make sure that you're secure, making sure that you're using a secure connection especially, uh, especially if these containers are something that reach out to other servers to do things or perform actions and you want those to be uh, secure. Uh, you know, protected, encrypted, then doing something like this is going to be very important for you. So I want to show you how to do that today because it took me a little time to kind of understand that and wrap my head around how Docker really handles that. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that but if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting a notification through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you jump over and become a supporter on Patreon patreon.com I've got the links in the description and the show notes I appreciate your support thank you so much so first I want to kind of go through the setup that I have. So we're going to use Qubit Torrent so you can see it here running. I'll go ahead and refresh the screen. You'll see that it's still there running. So it runs on port 8080. I don't have anything actually going right now, but this is my Qubit Torrent web interface that runs inside of Docker. And we can see that right here. Uh, if we just go down and look at Qubit Torrent here, uh, you can see that I've got the ports forwarded, so 8080 and everything like that. And if we click into it, we can actually see uh, the port forwarding information uh, as we move down through the, through the screen here. And as we go down to the bottom and we look at the network, you'll see that I'm on, I'm on the network that I created and called the R's. So first, let me just go through creating a network in Docker. Um, you can do this through the command line, but I'm going to show you in Portainer today because it's a little bit easier in my opinion. So you just go here on the left side to networks. And I'll enlarge this just a little bit for this for this uh, video here. Um, and you're just going to click on Add a Network. And then you just give it a name. It doesn't matter what it is, but don't put spaces and try to keep it all lowercase if you can. But let's just call this uh, My Test Network. And again, underscores and spaces, not capital letters. Uh, there we go. And then you can say whether this is a bridge network, uh, an IP VLAN and so on so you can set up your, your different network types but most of the time you're going to want a bridge if it's going to be reaching out to the internet so just leave it as bridge and then here you're going to set basically your subnet for the network that you're creating and a subnet uh, usually you're going to want to use slash 24 not slash 16 and really that just means that in that subnet only the last octet here is what will change now if you need more for some reason more uh, numbers for this network that you're creating than than 254 or 55 um, then, then you'll want to do a slash 16 but really slash 24 is fine so if we do uh, and any private subnets fine 192.168.10.0 and then we'll do slash 24 which means let me have all of the addresses on this network up through 255 so basically 192.168.10.0 through 192.168.10.255. Over here on the gateway, you're just going to assign what the gateway IP address is. And it, it's fine to give it anything you want within that subnet. So you can just do 192.168.10.1. That's normally the gateway address. You could use 254 if you prefer to do it that way. It depends on what router hardware you've used in the past as to what you've probably seen. But this is the most uh, common thing is to use the dot one address as your gateway. And then you're going to set up your IP range. So you're basically telling it how many IP addresses do I want and where do I want it to start. So in this case, the example starts at 126 and then it gives out 25 IP addresses. So I'm going to say 192.168.10.0. <laughs> and I want it to give out. 10 addresses so that's that's 10 addresses that are available which is 2 through 12 basically so this is this is how you set up basically the docker network now there's a little bit more down here so you can add a label to your network if you want to label it and then you've got a couple of other options here you can say is it an isolated network in other words can it be accessed from my from my LAN or is it isolated away if you don't want it to be accessed from your LAN you would you would enable this uh, I'm gonna leave it disabled because I do want to access these things 
and then enable manual container attachment so this one I generally say turn it on because that means when you create a container and you forgot to put it on this network or it didn't really have that option in the container um, config you can go in and tell it you know what switch this container over to this network and you can redeploy it through uh, portainer here and it'll it'll get it now um, access control you can leave as administrator you can change it to something else but I'm just gonna leave it as administrator and then once you're done you just say create the network so we're gonna click and create and you'll see that it's going to have created my test network right here and we can see there's the IP address and we can just click in to see a little bit of detail about that network so it created that network so that's how you create a network in docker so kind of a little side tutorial there for you uh, to get back to the other topic so um, when we go in to actually say you know what I want this container to be kind of my gateway to the internet for some of my other containers that's what we're going to do today so the first thing is we're going to look at qubit torrent we're going to use it as an example so i have qubit torrent already set up the containers running i have it on the r's network which is where i had jacket and i had sonar and some of the other things that all use qubit torrent together but i thought you know i'd, I'd rather do this in a private way and i use express vpn for that part um you're welcome to use your own VPN, any other VPN server. I don't get paid by ExpressVPN. Um, I pay them, in fact, for their service. They have really fast connectivity, which is one of the reasons that I use it, and uh, I really appreciate that. So, um, you know, feel free to use whatever VPN you want. You can create your own VPN. You can use WireGuard. It doesn't matter. Uh, but once you set it up in your container and it's running, you just need to know that it's there and that it's running, and then you're going to be able to set up your other machine. So the first thing you want to do, though, go into the container that you want. To use this on so I'm gonna go into qubit torrent and I'm going to stop the container so I'm just gonna give that a second to stop all right so now that it's stopped we're gonna go over here to edit and once it's opened up here we're gonna move down and we're gonna remove this port mapping so we just have to click the little trash can right out here to the right and that's done now we don't want to start this back up yet okay so there's a little bit more to do but the easiest thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to network. We're going to go down here. We're going to choose container for this network option. And then from the container list that gets created, we're going to choose our VPN container. So we're telling it, hey, I want you to use a containers network and I want it to be this express VPN container. So make sure you jump on that one. That's all we had to do there. We're going to say deploy the container. Now, as you're doing this, remember what the port forwarding was for the container. So I'm going to click on replace. We're going to let this container start back up just so it saves our changes. Okay, everything is done now for Qubit Torrent. Now we're going to go to ExpressVPN and we're going to click into this container. We're going to say edit. So inside of ExpressVPN, we're going to move down to the port forwarding section again. Now you see I've got some other ports already set up and these are ports for jacket and sonar and radar. But I need to add the ports for Qubit Torrent because I also want it to use the ExpressVPN uh, container. So I'm just going to click on this button right here for add a new port mapping. And I'm going to type in the ports. And it's 8080. And I was just forwarding it to 8080 on the container side. So I left my, my host and my container the same. And it's TCP. That's fine. And we're pretty much done with this part. We're going to scroll down and we're going to click on deploy this container. I'm going to click on replace so it's going to go out and restart ExpressVPN it's going to map those ports but if I had done this without getting rid of the ports from Qubit Torrent this would fail because it would say hey that ports already in use I can't I can't do anything with it so I have to first remove the port forwarding from Qubit Torrent tell it to use ExpressVPN and then go back into ExpressVPN and edit it to give me the Qubit Torrent uh, port mapping now once we've redeployed ExpressVPN because we've redeployed it, it probably removed all of these things from its network. So we can just click in. We're just going to click in a jacket. We're going to say edit. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom or go to network. We're going to make sure. See, so it says no container because it removed that container to recreate it. So we just have to go back and repick it and redeploy. I wish this was a little smoother. I wish there was a better way to do this, but this is just how it works. So we're going to redeploy each one of these just one by one. And we'll do jacket, sonar, and qubit torn here real quick. So that one's done. We'll go ahead and go into Qubit Torrent because when we did this, um, remember we saved it, but it got rid of that container when we did the update to ExpressVPN. So we just need to go and scroll down and say use ExpressVPN. There it is. And then we just redeploy that one and replace. And finally we go down to Sonar and again we click on Edit. And it's the same process. Click on Network, select ExpressVPN 
and click on deploy the container. And we're going to hit replace and we'll let that one redeploy as well. And once you get your good signs that everything's up and running, you can come back to wherever you get to your shortcuts. Now these take just a second to get started, but Jacket should be running already. There it is. I can click on test and I should get my green check marks. That's good. And Jacket is using my ExpressVPN connection. And we can click on Qubit Torrent. Now, I'm using Firefox and there's a weirdness about it. So you see that it comes up to the login screen and I click on login and it just reloads the login screen and you'll think, well, why is it doing this? So for whatever reason, if you if you go up here and put in the slash after the URL, that forward slash, it'll log in. So once you've done the login once and it's got the token, for whatever reason, it doesn't put that slash or Firefox removes that ending slash. And I don't really know why, but it needs it in order to get in here. So just be aware of that. I think Chrome will just go in if you're using Chrome, but if you're using Firefox, that's just kind of a weird little thing about Qubit Torrent. And then finally we have Sonar. We can open it up, make sure it's up and running, and there it is, there's Sonar. So now everything's running and it's all using my ExpressVPN connection, and ExpressVPN is kind of doing the port hosting and everything like that for me inside of my Docker setup. So again, it's not about setting up a VPN today. It's about when you've got a VPN set up and you wanna force your other containers to use that VPN, set up your VPN, make sure it's running, and then go in and you'll have to write down those port mappings that you have for each application, and then remove them from these applications and, and set them up to use your VPN connection and redeploy them so it saves, basically. Then you need to go into your VPN application, set up those port mappings, once you've got them set up, redeploy that. When you redeploy that, it's unfortunately going to remove it from these because it deletes, it removes that container, in which case you're trying to point to a container that doesn't exist for a minute, so these all lose it. But then it redeploys, and once it does, you just go right back in and you reset these guys up. So it's kind of a multi-step process, but once you've done it, if you're just going to leave it like I do most of the time, it just sits there and it does its thing and occasionally you can go in and check the status on something like uh, ExpressVPN or WireGuard or whatever and make sure it's still connected. In this case this tells me healthy and it'll tell me if there's something wrong so that's kind of nice to have health checks on here. But depending on the container you use you may or may not have that so you can just check out the logs and see if everything's connected and if not just go back in and reconnect it. You don't have to redeploy the container or anything just use the, the console to go in and reconnect your, your application uh, VPN. So that's really it. This is not a this is not a difficult one. It's a very useful one though, so I wanted to cover it. I hope it's helpful for you guys. I hope it gets you to the point where you're like, okay, now I know how to connect my containers through a VPN. I just need to set up a VPN container as well. You get it connecting out to the world. Now you're doing things in a private, more secure way, and that's always the goal whenever you're doing something self-hosted like this. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I hope you really enjoyed it and you get a lot out of it. If you did, like, subscribe, Click that little bell so you get notifications about new videos. Tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.